ability. Are you ready for an exciting cheer? It's going to be exciting. I hope so. Okay. Uh, this is, oh, first of all, word of the day, which is relevant, is egalitarian. Oh, equal. Uh, it does have to do with equality. Any, any more specific? Uh, Everyone the same. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Relating or believing or relating to or believing in the principle that all people are equal and deserve equal rights and opportunities. Uh, the movement to establish voting rights for women was an egalitarian movement, right? Trying to establish uh, the common rights. Do you need this term? They have a political party. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm asking. Oh, I don't think they have a political party, but it's definitely a cause um, uh, that people, you know, different causes people take up. Oftentimes. More right. So oftentimes for egalitarian, the implication is equality between men and women, right? You could technically use it about other classes or whatever, but in oh. this society, when you hear egalitarian, then it's often men and women. Then this next word I actually had as a word of the day earlier, normative. Do you remember what that is? It means establishing, relating to, or deriving from a standard or norm, especially of behavior. Uh, the CDC lists the normative safety guidelines for COVID, but there are exceptional cases which require different rules. Here's a way to think of it. I thought of this in the car. Uh, if you took the word normal and obligation and combine them, then that's like normative. Okay, so it's obligations, but that they're nor for the the norm. Okay. All right. So the title this year is Ram's Egalita Hidden Egalitarian Stance on Mitzvos. But there were there's actually another title that I wanted to use, and I was debating back and forth. Uh, I rejected it. But the other title is Is there an equivalent of Bris Mila for women? I thought that that sounded a little weird to ask. So. Um, I, I went with this. Yeah, so that, I didn't want people thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is no. Okay, no. Uh, but but it, I'm telling it to you because it is going to be related. Okay, because the question is like, we make a big deal about bris mila for men, and it's a sign of the covenant. Do women have anything that's equivalent? Like, oh, covering your hair? No, that's not. That's not the. Uh, that, 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 that's not a thing. I mean, people give answers like that. You know. All right. So. I want to clarify what are not the objectives of today's year. Okay, the objectives are not to take up the very, 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 very broad topic of women in Judaism in general. Okay, that's a very broad topic, very important, but not for a forty-five minutes year. I also am not going to be answering the many, many, many questions about egalitarianism in Judaism in general. I'm also not going to address the views of other Chachamim. Uh, just the Rambam, okay, because there's lots of different people with lots of different views, and I'm also not even going to address the Rambam's views <laughs> in their entirety. I'm only going to discuss one source, okay, so the scope of the shear is very limited, all right? Now, what are the objectives? So the title is to examine the, the Rambam's hidden egalitarian stance on mitzvah. So three things. Rambam, like I said, just Rambam. Two, it's hidden, no. meaning it's obscure, okay, and I'll tell you why it's obscure in a little while. Um, and three is this is only egalitarian, this is only his egalitarian stance on mitzvos, okay? Not on, on like other areas and also not even on all of halacha, just on mitzvos de orisa, okay? Um, goal number two is present one obscure source, raise a couple questions, and then sketch an approach that is supplemented by a few couple, uh, a couple other sources. And then the third objective is uh, leave you with a lot to think about and a lot of unanswered questions. Okay, remember this is Machshava Lab. This is an experiment in thinking. Okay, <laughs> so excuses out of the way. The one source we're going to look at is the Ramam in the Sefer Mitzvos in the conclusion of the Mitzvos essay. Now I call this obscure for three reasons. One is a lot of people don't even know that this source exists. Okay, because if you look at the Sefer Mitzvos. It's, it's divided into two sections, mitzvot say and mitzvot losa say, and people treat it like a reference book. They'll like look up a mitzvot say or losa say when they have it. But if you look at the very end of the mitzvot say, after the last mitzvah, there's like a couple paragraphs and that's where the source is found. A lot of people don't even know about it, okay? Number two, I couldn't find a single commentary on it, okay? I don't know what it is, but yeah. And number three is, all indications point to the fact that the Rambam, that this is a chiddush of the Rambam. In other words, I don't think there's a source for this other than the Rambam. Okay, so it's very, very rum, very, very like um, hidden in the depths of the Rambam. Okay, so that's that's the source. So he's you got to set the tone here. He's just listed all the mitzvahs to say. How many mitzvahs to say are there? Two hundred eighteen. 48. 248. Okay, good. Yeah, close. You got the eight and the two. <laughs> All right, you got it to the same degree that it says Leah on the book. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, he says like this, when you contemplate all these mitzvahs, which are pre were previously mentioned, you will find among them mitzvahs, which are an obligation on the congregation, not on each and every individual, such as building the base of Mikdash, 
appointing a king and annihilating the offspring of Amalek. Okay, and if you look in the Ramam, that's what he holds. It's not like you are obligated to go out and kill Amalekites. It's that when the nation of Qal Yisrael is waging war against the nation of Amalek, then the nation has an obligation to uh, wipe out Amalek. And same thing, you don't have to go out and start like building the base of Mikdash, right? If you went up to Harbais and started just like hammering away or whatever, that's a little misguided, <laughs> all right? Um, okay, number two, or not numbers, but some of the mitzvos are only an obligation for a particular man if he did a specific action or if a special condition befalls him, such as a korban shogig or korban hazav. Uh, it is possible for a person to remain his entire life and never do that action or never find himself in that condition. Well, what are some other examples of mitzvos that are only obligatory if you're in a certain condition? Sota. Okay, sota. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, good. That's sota. Yeah. Actually, no, I feel like a no. Yeah. What well, what's some what, what an example that like would come up in everyday life that could come up in everyday life? Oh, the um the foot thing. The chalitza. Yeah, yibum. Yeah, yibum and chalitza. Okay, that's good. Um, hashavas aveda. Right. You only have to do that if you find a lost object. I have an amusing example. There was uh, I heard once of a, uh, someone in my yeshiva when he was like uh, a very very from kid. Uh, like uh, like teenager, he wanted to do all the mitzvos, so he was thinking to himself, okay, I have to like get married so that I can fulfill the mitzvah of getting divorced. Like I'll just find some girl who also wants to do all the mitzvos, get married one second, and then divorce her for the other second, so like I can be makayim that mitzvah. He was serious. He, he was a thirteen year old, you know, but uh, uh, because because Brother. divorce <laughs> divorce is a mitzvah, right? But it's not a mitzvah in the sense that you have to go out and do it. It's a mitzvah. When do you have to get divorced? According. Yeah. If you're up, or if we want to, right? Meaning, if you, if you want to get divorced, then you have to do it according to the mitzvah. Okay, it's not like uh, you you have to like check off all the boxes. All right. Okay, some mitzvos are sets of laws for specific cases, as we've explained, such as the law of the Hebrew manservant, the law of the Canaanite slave, the law of the unpaid watchman, the law of the borrower, um, and others that have been previously mentioned. It is possible for a person to remain his entire life and not judge a case and not be obligated in this mitzvah. So this is a weird one. Ram has certain mitzvahs that basically are sets of laws that the judges have to implement when they judge those cases. Okay, so let's say I'm a judge and there comes a case before me where like you were uh, watching over Leah's backpack and it got stolen and I have to judge the case. So it's a mitzvah for me to apply those laws, but it's not a mitzvah for you because you're not judging the case. Okay, so if you're not a judge, then these are, are, uh, are not in the realm of a mitzvah. Okay. Um, some mitzvahs are only obligatory when the temple is extant, when the temple stands, such as the Chagiga, the Re'ia, and the mitzvah of Hakel, and obviously like all the other korbanos. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much, right? Except arguably Korban Pesach, which you could do on the Harabais, uh, not with the Mikdash, but yeah. Uh, if, you, if you get the right permits and stuff, and yeah. Yeah. All right. And some of them are only obligatory for someone who has specific types of property, such as masros, trumos, gifts of the kahuna, gifts to the poor, such as leket, parrot, shechagapea, ololos. So those last five are all agricultural. So if you have a field, then you have to leave a corner for the poor, right? But if you don't have a field, you don't. It is possible that a person will, will not have that type of property and will not be obligated in them. And a person can live his whole life and not become obligated in any of the mitzvahs in this category. But tzedakah is not included in these because it's an obligation even for a poor person who is supported by tzedakah, as we have explained. Okay, so Taka, everyone has to do. It's not dependent on having property. Okay, but some of the mitzvahs are, uh, I'm going to read the Hebrew, Chova al kol adam behechreach, obligatory for each and every man out of necessity, in every time, place, and situation. Okay, such as Sitis, Tfilin, and keeping Shabbos. We will call these the mitzvahs that are of this type, and this is where I use the term normative mitzvahs, uh, he, the Hebrew is mitzvos hechrachios, which I guess literally is compulsory mitzvos. Um, but I mean, all mitzvos are compulsory. So I, 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 normative was the best word in my mind. Okay. Uh, but the main thing is you get the idea that it's like all places and times, all right, not dependent on these other things, because they are a necessary obligation upon each man of Israel who has come of age in every time, place, and situation. Okay. Now, don't answer, guys, if you know the answer to the, like, if you know factually, but if you had to guess, of the 248 mitzvahs I say, how many mitzvahs fit this description? Not bad. I was gonna say 60 actually. 60 actually is correct, okay? Yeah. So there are 60, all right? 
And when you look at the 248 mitzvahs essay, you will find that the normative mitzvahs among them are 60 mitzvahs, assuming, yeah, yeah, this is crazy. It's so few, yeah. Uh, assuming that this is the man we spoke of, oh, sorry, oh, and this is an important thing. Assuming that this man we spoke of who is obligated in these 60 normative mitzvahs is in the same circumstances as the majority of men, meaning like he's an average guy. Namely, he lives- Because I go Yisrael? Um, you're going to see not, not necessarily Israel. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, he lives in a house in the city and eats the types of foods that are known to be human nourishment, bread and meat, and does business with people and marries a woman and has children. So for example, like, like if you, uh, don't have, uh, arms, so then you can't put on tefillin, right? But that doesn't change the fact that tefillin is one of these mentors because most men have arms. Okay. Ah, no, uh, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So, he says like this, oh, so, so just to summarize here, okay, of the 248, if you subtract the mitzvahs which are only obligatory on the tzibor, and the ones under special conditions, and the ones which are laws for courts, and the ones which require the base mikdash, and the ones which require property, you get 60 normative mitzvahs for all typical men in all situations, okay, but as Ayala said, how many of these 60 are obligatory for women? Okay, you say 10? Well, there's non <laughs> don't don't actually count them. You just had to guess, <laughs> gut gut guess. Forty six. Okay, forty six. Okay, and here they are. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna list them. Um, now th this is not the word for word Ramam's formulation, but I listed them in ways that would be comprehensible. Okay, so here are the normative mitzvos that men and women have in common that apply to all men and women in all places, given the fact that it's an average situation. Okay, to know that God exists to know that God is one, to love him, to fear him, to pray to him, to cling to him, which means to interact with the Chachamim, to swear in his name, um, and meaning that when you have to take an oath, then you take an oath in God's name, to emulate his ways, I mean, don't just go out and start swearing in God's name, <laughs> yeah, uh, to emulate his ways, uh, meaning that's to get uh, good mitos, um, sanctify his name, Kiddush Hashem, uh, affix a mezuzah, uh, make a birkas a mazon, uh, honor Kohanim, uh, rejoice on festivals on Yom Tov, uh, say vidui after you do tshuva, fulfill your vows that you make, give, this one, I don't understand why this is here. I'm not aware that we do this. Give portions of animals to Kohanim. I may, I just, no, no, we do this now. Oh, Does your dad get like cuts of meat from people? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do shechita for meat, uh, do kisui hadam, covering the blood uh, of a shechted behema, I mean, a shechted uh, chaya or of. Sign, um, this is a whole question on its own. Uh, knowing the signs or examining, uh, yeah, Ram holds like, if you take an animal and like you inspect it to see whether it's kosher by looking at it for the signs, that's a mitzvah say. Okay. So why so, are these the ones that if you're in a circumstance? Uh, because everyone, most people eat meat and most people eat fish. Most women don't eat fish. Uh, most women when? No, no, back then they did. Yeah, back back then, then then people would do their own shchita. Yeah, women? yeah, women could do uh, women could do shchita. Yeah, I mean, it's a mitzvah for them. If you're gonna do shchita, yeah. Um, I don't mean like if it was a mitzvah, I meant if they practically. Did. I don't. I, I would assume so because they're the ones who are preparing the food, right? Um, resting on Shabbos, uh, meaning not doing melacha. Uh, Kiddush on Shabbos, uh, bir chametz on the night of the fourteenth. Uh, eating matzah on the night of Pesach, uh, resting on, so I'm just saying, on, on Pesach, on the Shvisha Pesach, on Shavuos, on Rosh Hashanah, uh, fasting on Yom Kippurim, Shvisa on Yom Kippurim, uh, Shvisa on Sukkot, on Shemini Tzeres, obeying a Navi, interesting that that's in there, okay? Yeah. Um, it's interesting that that's in there given the fact that we don't have Navim since Chag HaZachar and Malachi, following the Sanhedrin, meaning obeying like Durbanans essentially, um, uh, making a maka around your house, right, or around dangerous stuff, uh, giving tzedakah, loaning to the poor, loving your fellow Jew, loving the ger, using accurate weights, honoring chachamim, kibud uh, aim, uh, mora um, the aim, and uh, having uh, sexual relations only uh, in the context of kiddushin, uh, after kiddushin, right? Now, the question you guys said about shrita and stuff, or that some of you said, um, uh, so I was thinking, if you took this list and you said, which ones are like, like for thousands of years, these were all normative. But for us, some of these clearly don't apply. Like that we just have, are most likely never going to encounter. Like, for example, yeah, so I just go to, you, we just go to the store and like buy stuff, a big enough, yeah. So if these yellow ones are the ones that really are still um, like that we will do, most of us are not going to end up swearing in God's name as part of a positive mitzvah. Most of us are not going to do our own shlita. 
you know? So it's even fewer, but like structurally, these are the 46, okay? Why not Maka? Yeah, so you could, you could look, you could debate about these, okay? You could, I mean, Hatala feels otherwise, but. Yeah, I mean, I think, I just think if you ask how many people have made a Maka, most people will say that they haven't, okay? Yeah, okay, so if these are the 46 that are normative for men and women, okay, what are the 14 that are only uh, for men? So here's the list. Saying Kriya Shema twice a day, learning and teaching Torah, which you guys have done this in Nushim class where like uh, men have the formal obligation of like, uh, uh, of teaching, yeah. Um, wearing head to fill in, wearing arm to fill in, uh, which the Roman counts as two separate mitzvahs, wearing titis, writing a safer Torah. Uh, this is the one Shane LA that I was saying is not just for Yisrael. He counts Birkas Kohanim, even though that's not even for all Jewish men, it's only for Kohanim men. So I guess he's he's using that standard. And I guess same thing, gifts for Kohanim. Kohanim don't have to give themselves, you know. Is uh, it about receiving the bracha maybe? That so like to um, be I, I, yeah, We're gonna talk about that, but I don't think that's what the Rama means. Okay, because I would say for like Mila, then maybe like if you have a child and like you're involved in- like, uh, yeah, We will talk about that also. Okay. Uh, counting the Omer, uh, dwelling in a sukkah for seven days, taking a lulav on the first uh, of sukkahs, hearing shofar on Rosh Hashanah, pru uruvu, um, which again is only an obligation for men. Uh, Hassan has to make his wife happy for the first year, which means he can't go to war or like leave or do, a, there's like a bunch of halakhas about, he has to spend a year with, uh, with his wife to make her happy. Um, and then all males have to get bris milah. Okay, so those are the 14 that are only for, for men, okay? So my question now, so it's, it, it's I, your reaction when I said, how many do you think are for women? You thought there were fewer, but it turns out most of them are for women, okay? But now here's, here's this other point, okay? Is it true that these 14 minutes are for men only? No, why not? Women play a role in a lot of them, play a role in a lot of them or women can. women can do them, okay? So here's my, my contention here, which is for each of the 14, Either women can do them voluntarily, or they're involved in the institution of the mitzvos, even though they don't, uh, they're not obligated to do them. So here, let me walk you through. Kriya Shema, you could do it voluntarily. Learning, teaching Torah, you could definitely do voluntarily, right? Wearing head tefillin and arm tefillin, according to the Ramam, you can do the mitzvah. No, nope. according to the Ramam, you can, you, you can do the mitzvah. It's a machlokas rishonim whether women can put on tefillin or not, right? So Ramam holds women can put on tefillin. Okay, no problem. Wearing titis, Ramam holds women could do uh, voluntarily. Okay, um, writing Sefer Torah, women could do voluntarily. Bigas <laughs> Kohanim, not can't do voluntarily, but now this is where what Shane Leah comes in. Say it again, Shane Leah. <laughs> you can receive the bracha. You can receive the bracha, right? A woman, a, a, a woman is involved in Bigas Kohanim the same way I'm involved in Bigas Kohanim, which is I get it, I don't give it. Okay, right? So you're part of the institution of the thing, okay? And you got to remember, by the way, of the mitzvahs that are only for Kohanim, there's tons of them. So Jewish men who are not Kohanim are excluded from lots of mitzvahs um, in the sense that they can't do them, but the fact that the Kohanim do our avoda and receive our gifts and stuff like that or whatever, that's like involvement. It's just the other side of the institution, okay? Counting the Omer, you could definitely do voluntarily. Dwelling in the for seven days, Voluntarily taking a little on the first aid. Voluntarily hearing show from Rosh Hashanah. Voluntarily pru revu. <laughs> You're definitely involved, right? And according to, according to um, to some, or I don't know if this is all or some, uh, it is a technicality. It's a it's a almost almost a technicality about where the Torah gave the obligation that um, that the Torah uh, placed the obligation because obviously men can't do this without women, right? But that like because of the nature of the physical act then the responsibility is placed on the men. Um, so I, that's a whole different topic, okay. Uh, uh, Hassan making his wife happy for one full year. She's, the, she's the recipient the of the institution. It's for her, right? Rabbi Shneewai, someone asked a question in the chat. Uh, okay. Um, in general, if someone asks a question in the chat, uh, then um, don't. <laughs> yeah, I can't even see it. So um, so you'll have to either be brave and say it or, uh, uh, or ask me later, okay? Uh, I can't look at the chat now. All right, um, all uh, males must get bris mila. So what's the nature of women uh, in they're this? In the so they're involved in the institution, but also you should know- Like the birth. Birth. The Torah game. The Torah, right? Women can do it, okay? Women can do bris mila, right? Um, it's just, it, it's incumbent upon the, the, the father first, uh, but then the woman could do it if, there, if, if there's no father or if, he's, if he can't do it, okay? So you see from here, right? Interesting thing, which is that of the 60 mitzvos, oh, did I summarize this here? Oh, sorry. So summarizing this. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I'll summarize it afterwards. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Doesn't a voluntary missile learn less reward? No. <laughs> ah, okay, so I'm gonna answer no. Okay, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, does anyone know the Gemara that addresses this issue? Yeah. Okay, sorry, let me specify the question. Anyone know the halakhic principle which would, which would seem to indicate that women get less reward? I'll start you off. I'll start you off. Gadol. <laughs> yeah. Gadol mitzvah v'osa mimi she'ena mitzvah v'osa. Right? So, so generally we say one who is commanded in a mitzvah and does it is greater than one who is not commanded and does it. Now, one thing I did not notice until just today is it never says here, at least, that you get more reward. It says you're greater. Okay, so we have to understand what this means. So Tosvo says as follows, and I don't know which explanations you've heard. Uh, Tosvo says, um, it seems that the reason one who is commanded is better is because he uh, he has more anxiety and suffering at the thought of transgressing the one who is not commanded. Okay, why? I don't know if you've heard that expression. You got bread in your basket. Yeah, it's like a certain security. So if you are not commanded, then you could just not do the mitzvah if you want to. Okay. So there's like a, a psychological conflict that the person who's commanded has to contend with and overcome every time, whereas the person who's not commanded could just decide uh, not to do it. Okay. Um, so, um, so the thing is, is that, uh, but in terms of the reward for the, so this is my understanding of this. Okay. That there's the reward for the mitzvah itself. And then there is this side reward of grappling with the psychological conflict, okay? Now, the mitzvah itself, when you guys learn Torah, you get exactly the same reward that men do when we learn Torah because you're gaining the same ideas and you're perfecting yourself and you're getting off of Shem, you're getting your Shem. It's exactly the same. You know, when you, when you listen to the shofar and you think of all the ideas of shofar or whatever, it's exactly the same, right? The only difference is that you don't have the psychological battle that comes from like the example I gave when I was talking about this in Yeshiva last night is like, you don't have the experience. I mean, maybe you have it in a different way, but I'll give this specific example. You don't have the experience of you're lying in bed, almost falling asleep. And you're like, Oh no, I forgot to Davin Mariv. I have to get up, get out of bed, Davin Mariv, you know, but so it's like, you know, you don't have that experience with these particular mitzvahs you do have for the other 46. Right. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, only the there's so many other right, that's why I specified that we're only talking about Dorais and Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lotus Plus, everyone's absolutely equal. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Saying, there's yeah. There's more mitzvahs. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So, so you could say, isn't a woman missing out on the, on the reward for waging this, this psychological battle? Okay. For example, the, um, so the answer is yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it's more than just yes. So the Ritva on that same Gemara says, uh, he quotes someone, he says, Pirish Zal. I don't know who he's quoting though. Okay. Um, that uh, he says uh, <laughs> that the one who was commanded is prosecuted by the Satan, but the one who was not commanded is not prosecuted by the Satan. Now, what, now that we've been talking about Satan, what do you think means that you're prosecuted by the Satan if you're commanded? You have like more of an internal conflict. Yeah, more of an internal conflict, right? Satan is Yitzhara and you have to like wage war with Yitzhara, right? But then he does say, Lufum Tsara Agra, that's the last mission in Pirkei Avos, that the, according to the suffering is the reward, which means that there is a reward for engaging in that psychological battle, okay? But then he says something else, which I thought was very interesting. Um, Nevertheless, even a person who does a mitzvah voluntarily is worthy of reward, for he has voluntarily, out of the goodness of his heart and his chasidus, meaning going beyond the letter of the law, entered himself into the scope of the mitzvah to do the commandment of Hashem. If you were commanded, then can you get that reward? No, it's impossible because you're, you're, you're not doing it voluntarily. You cannot do something voluntarily. You can't do something oblig obligatory voluntarily. No, but, but what he's saying is, is he's saying that if you choose to take on a mitzvah, right, that's a special type of chasidus and a special type of reward that you can't get otherwise. And I'll just, as a side point, as a gear, I get this uh, from time to time. People will say like, you're so lucky. You got to choose to keep the mitzvahs. That's a high level, you know? Well, okay, yeah. I mean, I got to choose to keep the mitzvahs. Well, you're so lucky that you were born into it, you know? It's like, so the way I, I think of it here is, yes, a woman misses out on the, on the sahar of battling the satan, right, of the psychological conflict. But a man, in regards to these 14 mitzvahs, misses out on the reward of voluntarily following the mitzvah he's not obligated in, you know? So we have to do these 14 mitzvahs. 
Um, so we get the reward for the battle, but you can choose to do the mitzvah and get the reward for doing for choosing to do the mitzvah as a voluntary thing. You know, your Midas Chasidus options are broader by 14 mitzvahs than, than for men, okay? So the upshot of all of this, okay, and by the way, this is not the main part of this year. <laughs> this is all the facts, okay? The upshot is regarding the 46 mitzvahs, I say, that constitute the average Jew's religious practice, okay? And that's why the Ram was highlighting this, is if you look at any Jew in any time in history, and you say, what is your practicing of, like, your active practicing of Judaism, your essays? It's, it's 60 mitzvahs. So of those 60, 46 of them are absolutely equal between men and women. The other 14, women are not excluded from any of them, right? Um, again, except in the way that women can't do birkas konim in the same way that non kohanim men can't do birkas konim, right? So you're part of the institution, okay? Or you could do them literally. Two, you can participate voluntarily and get the same primary reward, meaning the reward from the mitzvah itself. And then third, you miss out on some of the secondary reward of battling with the Yitzhar, but you have access to another form of, of reward that men can't have, which is the taking it upon yourself voluntarily. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a trade-off. I mean, trade-off is the wrong word, but it's like, you know, there's some scar that only you can access and there's some scar that only I can access, okay? Okay, so this, this is what I believe is the fundamental egalitarian stance of the Ram in regards to mitzvos, meaning that when you think about it, it feels like I think a lot of people are under the impression that women are excluded from a lot. And again, they are excluded from things that we're not talking about. For example, there's a whole question of like, like smicha or like leadership positions or whatever, you know, or like, like roles. There's a lot more to talk about. But in terms of mitzvos, I think the Ram holds and is emphasizing that men and women are essentially equal, except in these 14, and even there, they're, they're pretty much equal. Aren't there mitzvos that only women? Obligated or no, men are obligated in that. Yeah, men are obligated in that also. Yeah, yeah. It's just that, yeah, there are there are ones that that women uh, primarily do for various reasons, uh, um, either as a minhag or like that. That's the the circumstance. Yeah. Anita. Anita. Yeah, but that's for that's for yeah. Because Anita's, Anita's only a losase, and men are are uh, obligated in uh, in keeping that the same as women. Oh. Right. Meaning. Right, meaning there's no mitzvah of nida. There's a losase of having, you know, bia when. So it's like the voluntary type of thing. Like yeah, right, right, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, you're, it's it's a good example of something where like men and women partake in the institution, but in very different ways. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's true. Okay, so now we get to the main part of this year in the last twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Ram now says this very cryptic thing. Okay, he says, "Behold, it has been made clear to you that of these sixty normative mitzvos, there are forty-six mitzvos that women are also obligated in, and fourteen mitzvos that women are not obligated in." The mnemonic for these 60 normative mitzvahs is a Pasuk and Shir Shirim. There are 60 queens. Okay, that's Shir Shirim, which is all allegorical. I don't even know what that means. Okay, that's fine. And the mnemonic for these 14, which women lack, is Yad, Azlas Yad, power wanes, meaning it diminishes. Okay, Yad is the gematria of 14. Okay. Alternatively, the mnemonic for women's obligation in these 46 is Gam at badam b'riseich. You two are badam, are in the, the, the covenant, the blood of your covenant, Pazak and Zaharia. In other words, the numerical value of badam uh, is, uh, is the, the number of mitzvahs they're obligated in. Okay, and these mitzvahs constitute the bris that is obligatory for women of necessity. Let me read that in the Hebrew. Zehu, oh, sorry. Hein uh, habris hamyuchedes lenashim behechreach. Okay, now, if you ignore that last line, it looks like the Ram is just giving us a mnemonic, right? And this is a very common thing to have a mnemonic just to remember numbers and stuff. So either it's Yad, which is 14 that women are not obligated in, or it's Bidam, which is 46 that they are obligated in. And the Ram could have stopped there, but he says, this is the special bris for Nashim, these 46. So the question is, what is the, yeah, the question is, what is this bris nashim he's talking about? The covenant with women, and how is it in these 46 mitzvahs? Especially because these 46 mitzvahs for men are just like any of the other 60. But he sounds like he's saying that these 46 play a special role for women, and that's their bris. Okay. Why does he attribute those psukim to women? Yes, and why those psukim to women? Now, I worked on this for a couple of years, or not not solid, okay, but anytime when I used to teach uh, um, uh, 12th grade Chumash and we did Bris Mila, uh, I would uh, revisit this. And I had this theory that like, somehow the Ram is like, there's an idea here that is expressing, he's expressing about women's mitzvahs. 
And again, I didn't find any commentaries. And then this week, a friend of mine shared with me an article by someone named Rabbi Gidon Roth, Rothstein that he he says the same theory. So I'm just going to really quickly read you. I'm not going to read you his actual theory, but but you'll see. Uh, while we might ignore the number 60 and 14 as insignificant, the mnemonics Rambam provides suggest that he saw them as meaningful. For the number 60, Rambam cites the verse, Shishim he malachos, these are 60 queens. There are 60 queens, meaning these 60 commandments are the queens of the religion in that they are always present in a Jew's life, right? The queen's always like by the king's side. For women, Rambam offers two verses. First, ki azlas yad, for power, their power has gone, a verse that clearly sees the loss of the yad as a tragedy. That's in Hazinu, and it's talking about the Jews being weak. In the case at hand, Rambam would seem to be using the verse to refer to women's having yad, 14, fewer mitzvahs than do men. Given the tenor of the verse, this mnemonic ratifies the view that men, of many modern women that the religion outlines a lesser religious role for them, 14 60ths lesser to be exact, okay? Right, so that's that's a negative thing, okay? Rambam, however, recites another mnemonic, the verse gam ad badam bri seich, as all, for you also because of the blood of your covenant, I have sent your captives forth. With the word badam, 46, signifying the group of mitzvahs in which women are obligated. In this version, women's mitzvahs are a bris, a covenant, which can provide a redemption on its own, not just as a pale shadow of men's covenant. Rahman actually explicitly characterizes that group of 46 mitzvahs as the covenant in which they are obligated. So he's acknowledging my observation that the Rahman is making more of a big deal here. Oh, sorry, no, he, made, he says now. Rahman closed this by saying, and this is what we wish to hint at. Oh, I forgot to include that line. This is what we wish to hint at with the uh, positive commandments and their number. Now, Rahman is a big fan of hints. Okay, he'll always say, I'm hinting at or note this to point out that there's some underlying idea that you should think into. Given the Rama's penchant for oblique statements, like I just said, we suspect that he was trying to draw attention to the mnemonics as having substantive meaning, not just as a convenient memory device. This is especially true since he's providing two mnemonics with different significance for how he characterized women's obligations, either as a loss of yod or a dom that creates a covenant on its own, cries out for explanation. So what is the Raman getting at? He has one more paragraph here. We believe that Raman was drawing attention to two possible views of women's role in Judaism. Considering their lesser set of obligations, it would be possible, if not natural, to see that as a deduction, a loss from the true Judaism. Seen from another perspective, though, the corpus of women's mitzvahs constitutes an independent unit with a meaning and message all its own. It is as a step in elucidating the Badam Covenant that we offer this article. And he has an article about it, which I chose to not read before giving this year because I didn't want to prejudice myself. So I'm going to have to read it afterwards. And I'll tell you what he says. But now we're going to go and try to answer this on our own. Okay, so what is the nature of this bris nashim and how do these 46 normative mitzvahs constitute this bris? Okay, uh, and I'm going to offer one possible approach. Now, what I try to do is, oh, actually, I'll tell you what I tried to do in a second. So here, let's first look at the Pasuk, okay? This is Zechariah. You too, through the blood of your covenant, I will release your prisoners from the pit in which there is no water. Okay, a little Yosef reference there, right? Matsus David says, also you, Israel as a whole, because of the merit of the blood of the covenant, namely the mitzvah of Mila, to which you clung when you were in exile, in the merit of this blood, I will release your prisoners from the pit in which there is no water. That is, I will take you out of the depth of exile. Okay. So what is he saying the shot is in the Pasuk, Dam Briseich? Brismila. And that's, I think that's obvious, right? Like that is the, <laughs> the blood of the covenant, right? So what you see from here, though, if you combine it with the Ram, is that there's two Brisos. The bris for men, oh, and they're both alluded to in the Pasuk. The bris for men is you two through the blood, i.e. the Brismila of your covenant. But for the women, you two through the blood, i.e. the 46 mitzvos of your covenant, I will release your prisoners. So in other words, the same Pasuk is referring to this bris, but for men, it's bris mila, and for women, it's these 46 mitzvos. And by the way, what gender is the Pasuk in? No. At briseich, right? So the, 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 this is uh, depicting Klai Yisrael as, uh, as, as a woman. In fact, the Pasuk before it in the paragraph it calls it uh, Bas Tzion, daughter of Tzion. So I don't know if that's why the Ramam chose this Pasuk, but it's alluded to here. So here's my approach, okay? My hypothesis is, my inductive reasoning, <laughs> is that the bris mila for men and the bris... Oh, the bris of the 46 mitzvahs uh, for women serve either the same or a related purpose. So men have to do one obligation, and then women have to do these 46, and then they're equal? No. Men have to do 60 mitzvahs, and women have to do 46 of them. But for men, the one mitzvah that represents their bris is the milah. And for the women, the, the, the representation of their bris is the 46. 
Meaning men have to keep all these missiles also. Don't forget. <laughs> okay. It's just for us, those 46 don't have any special significance. The only one that has a special significance in the covenant is Bruce Mila. For women who do the same 46, then that signifies their bris. And the question is how? Yeah. Okay. That's the question. Okay. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like that's the type of bris we're going for. Because for men, it's like an action. Yeah. And it's, it's a very like, different kind of bris, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and again, and the question is also like for men, so those 46 are just normal, like, you know, there's no significance. Okay. Now here's the cool theory I wanted to come up with, which I'll describe to you. And then I'll tell you the theory I actually came up with. Okay. Which is still cool, but just not as cool. <laughs> the cool theory would have been if we looked at the Rambam's view of why we do bris mila and it constructed a theory based on that and the Rambam's view of these 46 mitzvos. Would have been really cool. And maybe someday that'll happen, <laughs> but I could not. Uh, figure out based on the Ramam's interpretation of Mila, uh, how this idea. So I went to a, another good buddy of mine, the Sefer Achinuch. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at the Sefer Achinuch's explanation of Bris Mila, and I'm going to try to explain how his explanation of Bris Mila explains how for men, it's it's Mila, and for women, the sign of the Bris is these 46 mitzvahs. Okay, he says like this, uh, the matter of this mitzvah is that we cut the foreskin, and then he gives a graphic depiction <laughs> of, yeah. of what the procedure is, which yeah, like, I didn't want to make anyone feel comfortable, so I censored it. Uh, ask, <laughs> ask male members of your family or uh, 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 about what it is. Um, okay, and so he describes it. For it is known to those who understand that the perfection of man's form requires the removal of that foreskin, which is excess to it. Okay, now this is a mach locus rishonim. <laughs> Ramam holds that the perfected bodily form of man is with the foreskin because God doesn't create excess things. And so Ramam holds that the mitzvah is you render your body imperfect. Okay. Sefer Achina holds that the foreskin is extra, is extra. Oh, and by the way, the Greeks also held that the perfect form of man is with the foreskin because that's why they, they like ostracized the Jews who were circumcised when they competed in the Olympic games. Cause like you guys mutilate your body, the body is a temple, you know? So like that, but the Sefer Achina holds that the excess that the foreskin is imperfect. So when you cut off the foreskin, you are perfecting man's uh, body, okay? So that's step one, is the, the mitzvah of Mila in substance is cutting off the excess foreskin, which is perfecting the form of the human body. Now, what's the reason though? The root reason of this mitzvah is that since Hashem desired to establish his nation, whom he separated to be called by his name, a sign in their bodies to differentiate them from the other nations in the form of their bodies, just like they are differentiated from them in the form of their souls, whose source and preparation are not equal. Okay, so what he's saying is the Jew has a different soul, not in the sense of Jewish souls are different than non-Jewish souls. Jewish souls are, are, are different in what sense? Is, is the, yeah, is the, the, I mean, what does the Torah give us though? Or how do we become more? Is, is the perfection, right? Is the ideas, the knowledge, the values. So our souls are different. And what we want to do is we want to reflect that in, we say that our, the Jewish body is different, which points to the fact that the Jewish soul is different because of its ideas, because of its preparation and uh, and source, okay? And Ram has a similar idea, by the way, when he says that Talmud HaChachamim should dress differently than average people to show that just like they're differentiated in their garments, so too they're differentiated in their ideas. So it's a similar idea there. You know, I think that's part of why Kohanim also have to have a uniform. Okay, so this is step two. Is Hashem wanted the nation to make a sign in their flesh to differentiate his nation from other nations in the form of their bodies, just like they are differentiated in the form of their souls, okay? Um, which is their ideas. Okay, next step. So now the question is why make the sign in that part of the body? Why not just have like an ear piercing or something, okay? So he says, and he established this differentiation on the male organ, which is the cause of the preservation of the species, in addition to the fact that it contains a perfection of the bodily form as we explained. So he already gave one, he's saying, I already gave one explanation is that there's excess skin there, but he says the, the, the place of the sign was chosen because it's part of the body responsible for the preservation of the human species. Now you can ask a question. This is not from the safe thing. This is just my addition here. What is it? Who cares? What does pre preserving the species have to do with this idea? You're passing your idea. Exactly. Okay. Is that, that the preservation of B'nai Israel depends. Oh, I, I forgot to add the line on differentiating ourselves from the other nations in our ideas and passing that on. Meaning there's there's biologically passing uh, uh, on the species, which is having kids. Then there's ideologically passing it on, which is represented through the ideas. Okay, last step. And then this is gonna be the thing that is my theory relies on. 
And Hashem desired his chosen nation to perfect their bodily structure, and he wanted this perfection to be through human agency, al yedehada, meaning that you, we do it ourselves. And he didn't create man perfectly from birth in order to hint to him that, I mean, this is like a symbolism, that just as the perfection of his bodily form is through him, so too it is within his power to perfect the form of his soul through proper actions. Okay, that there are things in nature that are perfected automatically, right? Like a, a, an animal is born and it reaches its perfection naturally. Humans, though, have to do it through their own bechira and their own actions, meaning the mitzvos. Okay, so Hashem commands us to perfect our bodies through our own agency and our own actions in order to remind us that the perfection of our souls is through our own agency and our own actions. Okay, so that's the Sefer Chinuch. Okay, I, it's a nice, nice idea about Mila in general. If you ever need a Devar Torah at a bris, mm -hmm. this is this is my go-to one. I, I I think I did it once, but uh, okay, it's uh okay. So, so now what does this have to do with our topic? And this is okay. This is my possible approach. Okay, is bris Mila and bris Nashim are counterparts? Okay, how so? According to Sefer Chinuch, Mila demonstrates that just as Jews perfect their bodies through their own actions, so too we perfect our souls through our, our uh, through our, our own actions. The bris for men is the mushal, which means we're differentiated in our bodies, whereas the bris for women is the nimshal, which is differentiated ideas through doing the normative mitzvos. Okay, so it's like a by men keeping the bris mila and women keeping the bris nashim, that points to the idea of the Jewish identity that we differentiate our souls through the keeping of the mitzvos, which gives us ideas. So it's like it's like you have a one mushal which the Sefer Chinuch says is the purpose of Reis Mila, but then men get the, the literal part of that muscle, which is we actually mutilate our bodies, right? And women carry on the, again, men are doing the same mitzvahs, but this is all like in symbolism, right? W women, by keeping the 46 normative mitzvahs, and this is why it has to be the normative mitzvahs. It can't just be like, like the, the bris is through one particular mitzvah. It's the mitzvahs that follow the Jews around no matter where they go and that are part of Jewish life, then that's the, um, that is the, the idea that the Mila of men represents. Okay. And that, that is defining what Jewish identity is, which is shaping your soul through its ideas, through the, um, uh, through the actions that you keep. And if you want to put it in Eo Aristotelian uh, uh, ideas, okay. Jewish men have the bris in their matter and women have it in their in 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 the or is it in actions related to matter, and women have it in actions related to form. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel like for men to have both to have the muscle and then a woman to have the nymph. So I don't know. Like, I guess you could say, oh no, but men is more the muscle and women is more than so, but um well we're not going to be able to get around that fact, right? Is the fact that only men have uh, have the um, the bodily breasts, right? The Could you repeat her question? Yes, thank you for reminding Please. me. Please. Yeah. Uh, 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 I asked question is that? Um, so just say it one more time. I just want to uh, make yeah, sure I get it clear. This is still like saying that men have more. They have both the muscle and the nimshal, but women. Yeah, men's. I was saying men have more, which is the muscle and the nimshal, whereas women just have the nimshal. Um, uh, yeah, that, I, that, I'm, I'm not bothered by that kind of question because the question is, is first of all, you can tell the Sefer Chinuch is giving a symbolic interpretation here, right? And I think you're going to have to say according to the Ramam, it's also symbolic. In other words, for, for the fact remains that only men have a, a, a bodily differentiator where they are marking their bodies, marking a sign of the covenant on their bodies. The question, though, is, is like what role do what role in in signifying the bris or you know in in i keep on using the word signifying because i think that's the best thing in signifying the brisk the brisk the bris <laughs> does mila play for men and the 46 missiles play for, play for women that's the question i'm trying to explain i feel like the natural opposite would uh, be that oh, sorry hold on just a second, Julia. yeah say it again you're saying that like the you're looking for like a different action, which includes both men and women, or only women, if that was the case, that had that like has the same idea. I'm saying the wrong, and then the wrong gives us that it's these 46. Yeah, people. right. Yeah, in other words, like I, I, I see this is this is partially also why I wanted uh, I, I thought about calling this the equivalent of Bris Mila for uh, for women because there is another thing, and this is I'm kind of undecided on, but like okay, if I think it's fair to say that bris mila for men is associated with Jewish identity, right? 
So the question could be posed in a different way. If let's say we didn't have this Ramam, the question could be posed, well, what about do do women not have an equivalent of of like being involved in in like the production of Jewish identity as men? But the answer to that is very obvious. No. Only women can produce Jews. Right? So women actually make <laughs> Jews and men just have the sign of Jewish identity. You know, so from that perspective, it's like the reverse, you know, is that then men just have like the, the stamp, like the uh, OU, but then women produce the actual controversy, you know, <laughs> you know, um, so, so, so like, like you, you can look at it from that perspective also. Um, I'm just trying to answer this, just this one localized question of like, in what way can we see any similarity or relationship between the 46 normative mitzvos of women, or just saying, forget the 46, saying, women's bris is through their normative mitzvos and men's bris is through their their circumcision you know that's like the idea i'm trying to say she's officially over so um uh, I'll, I'll continue to take questions like i usually do but uh, uh i just want to say she's over hey um, thank you so much you're welcome uh shana hey, rabbi, I, um i wanted to, to just say uh, it was really really nice i really enjoyed it um there was uh um, i happen to be listening to a really interesting show by, from rabbi chase and one of the discussions he, he talks about um, uh, that actually the, the merit of women in, is keeping the system going. He, he actually, right. a very interesting, you know, he argues against saying that uh, uh, that a person who's not Mechuyav is because he's, oh, because he's Mechuyav, he's, he gets more of a schar because he's, he has a harder time. So he actually argues against that. So it's interesting. Interesting. But I, I, so maybe, I think I first heard this from him in a different context. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll tell you. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the number. I'll, I'll look it up. But okay, uh, sure. I was thinking that maybe uh, uh, your idea, maybe uh, related to that, women, you know, through the what they're doing is that they're actually keeping their role is to to keep the system going. And I got I thought that because when you said that the women are the ones who are producing the Jewish children, that that's the essential role is that they're keeping. Their, their brief is that they're keeping the system yeah. going. So I thought about that, but the problem I had, and this is kind of tied to a larger issue, which is, and, and this is something I'm, I'm secretly believe no one asked this question because I would have had to say it's a different topic, is um, there's a general question of why, not not halakhali, but philosophically, why are women pater from mitzvah cessation as mongrama, you know, uh, from time uh. to those. And the understanding that I have, and in fact, if you look at all those 14 mitzvahs, um, that the women are are uh, pater from. I know they're not all mitzvahs non grama, but the majority of them are, and it has to do with maintaining the philosophical ideas of Judaism through reminders, like tefillin and 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 uh, tzitzis. You know, those are all like reminders. Mm -hmm. You know, and kriyshma. Um, and so, so I, I so Naomi, like, I, I hear you the idea you're saying, and certainly in terms of the role of like like raising Jewish children, that's more integral to the preservation of the ideas in Judaism than men. But I, I, I need to think about like what, men clearly have this role of like passing on the Masorah through formal Talmud Torah. Mm -hmm. And I, I need to like- Yeah, <laughs> that, so, so think about yeah. it, a lot to think about. Yeah, okay. yeah, a lot to think about, I'll, like my objective. Let me just tell you the, yeah, I, I, and uh, let me just tell you the discussion if you want uh, that I'm listening to for a second. Oh, is it? No, Wait, is what? that? It's a questions and answers discussion, you know, from Rabbi yeah. Chase. Uh, is it 166? You can tell me later if you want. Uh, I just want to take up. Yeah. Yeah. Something uh, like she, that. Yeah. Like, Jane Lee, did you have a question? Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. Okay, I'd thank be you. You're welcome, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Naomi. Um, right. I was curious if, it's interesting. I feel like the natural opposite of having like physical signifiers would be the Talmud Torah, but yet, like, so it would be nice, it would be like, um, bris uh, for men is in the mashal, and then bris for women is in the nimshal, which would be Talmud Torah. But it doesn't uh -huh. break it down like that. No, it doesn't break it down like that, yeah, yeah. But I guess like maybe, and then I was like think rationalizing it to myself, because I feel like, I don't know, I, I don't wanna, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, go, go ahead. Um, I'm trying to recollect my thoughts, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I just wanna maybe, uh, underscore one more point also, is that um, when I mentioned that the Ramam, to my knowledge, doesn't have a source for this. Okay, here's how you could think of it. You could think of it as you know how we say that, that the midrashim were, were people, the chachamim who wrote them came up with them. So this is almost like a Rambam 
authored Midrash, you know, uh, like, so I don't know how much like weight, see, I wouldn't have placed this much weight on the, uh, on this idea where not for the fact that he says that this is the bris for women and, and like says, and this is something you should note that we've hinted at, which sounds like he holds it's, it's more than just like a, a drush, you know? So that, that's why I'm like on the fence. I'm on the fence about like, like, you know, when something's just a drush, you have like certain liberties for like how loose you are. Um, and that's why I'm like in my analysis of this, I'm kind of on the fence as to how far to take the ideas or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know what that really says. I also don't know what that says, yeah. But you don't have comments on it. Also, another question I want to ask you. Is Shanley, you have your thoughts yet? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I feel like, maybe this is obvious, but like the 46 for women having a different purpose than the two for men, that yeah. kind of implies that, even though it's saying 46 missiles, it implies that it's like something different. Yeah. yeah. You can't say that. Yes, so yeah, I, I agree. Explain what is it for men? Exactly, yeah. And why is it not? For yeah, and, and here's the thing, by the way, is I don't even think, I know he he gives the drusha that's the 46, but essentially what he's saying is it's not just the 46, it's the normative mitzvos are the bris for women. It's just that due to various technicalities, then they only have 46. But really, the idea is not 46. The idea is normative mitzvos. So that might be- The lifestyle itself is the identity. Uh, yes, about lifestyle about itself is the identity. Right? That's a good way to say it, right? For for men, the identity is in the is in the, is is well. Wh where's the idea that the lifestyle is the identity for men? It would be the same, though. I would say that the forty six is the same of the basic unit of a Jewish male. I feel like the reason why this idea like is good and I like it is that for men, the biggest external feature that you notice that separates them from other people is their body and that they have right. a brit milah. But for women, you see that their actions- Is their actions, different. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, maybe maybe we could use this to address the the, uh, the the thing that was bothering Shane and Leia, that for men, this is carried on through Talmud Torah. Oh, this is an interesting thing, by the way. There's a machlokas rishonim. The Radak says on that Pasuk and Zechariah, whether it's the dam of Mila or the dam at Sinai. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that, but I'm just, I don't give a, forget about that. But, uh, but the, for men carrying on the ideas through Talmud Torah is like the main involvement in this, whereas with the women, it's in maintaining the lifestyle. Yeah, I have to think about it. Yeah, stuff to think about. <laughs> like an idea kind of about like, I guess like in like kings and stuff like that, how they have an heir. That yeah. Be a part of it, like how males are more like continuing the bloodline. Yeah. In a physical way. Women, it's more of a yeah. I mean, that, that is the interesting thing, right? Is that when it comes going back to the Jewish identity thing, is that that you can only be a uh, not through conversion, but you can only be a Jew if you're born from a Jewish woman. But then the shavit and the role and kahuna and all that stuff is passed down through the uh, through the man in terms of like the function. Yeah, like the more functional yeah, Jewish yeah. role, like the job versus the the person who has the job. You know, both women and men they do have a functional and like a more and whatever roles so yeah he is saying that men like naturally in their other 15 obligations that women don't have do that spiritual role kind of so yeah they need to differentiate that more i don't know you yeah know yeah I, I, get, I get where you're trying to go yeah 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 this is the type of thing that i think there's still stuff to be thinking about uh, i want to throw out just one more thing here radical thing that i'm pretty i think is false but it's said by one of the mafarshim which like he thinks it's true <laughs> okay shadal uh, holds Shadal, yeah, Shmuel David Lutato, uh, holds that Mita Orisa women were chayev in all the same uh mitzvah as Mangrama as men, and that the Rabbanan at a later age uh uttered them. Now, in order to hold the reason why I think that that's false is that I my understanding of how Torah well Pad works is such that that can't happen. <laughs> you can't put it. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 He holds. He holds yeah, that they. No, no. No. He holds that they got. They did it through the Yugo Mumiyah Shatora and the span. But there's a big question in general about what do Chazal have the right to innovate in halacha through the drashos and what don't they? He holds like this very radical view that they can like fundamentally change structures. So according to that, like is that then. That, but they're mitzvahs, though. It's not the, even like it's a siyag. It's like if well, you're well, like. But we know we know that Chachamim, do something. We know that Chachamim can suspend mitzvahs, right? Okay. They do it. No. In Shadat Chak, no? Under uh, Russia, Shofar on Rosh Hashanah, 
right? That was the, that was the big. That's uh, true. That's it, true. Right. It's Shay Veltase Vel, is that we don't blow shofar to Orisa on Rosh Hashanah. Right. If it's on Shabbos, you know. Crows bowl. Yeah. This isn't with the Dorites. No, it's a category, but I'm saying like the. the in that case, like you're doing it because there's another Dorite that's more important. But here, it's like you're just doing it live. No, but the you, immediate right, so you would do both. You would do shofar on Rosh Hashanah and you would keep Shabbos. And, uh, you know, but. I'm not thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Jewish women. Like, like, you, yeah. I feel like when you see a Jewish woman, you know they're a Jewish woman from the outside. Like the way that we emphasize our dress, like socially, the way that it's like come about in our communities. Like, I mean, you could say that. College, but you got to remember, what does, you, what does a Jewish man look like for most of history? Is he's literally wearing tefillin all day. <laughs> right. Is it, that, the fact know. that we don't have that anymore is so in, is so interesting. It's almost like the kippa took the the identity signifier. Yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, a lot to think about. Hopefully, this. Can was... I ask a question? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if it's for the scope of today because it's more of like a minor question sure. or something that we mentioned. Yeah. Why is um, tefillin and tzitzit not chafta but gavra? Good question. Yeah, I get. I, uh, Do you have recommend if where I can like. I don't I'll know. Into that. Uh, not, okay. not offhand. I'll let you know if I think anything. All right, have a good job. Right. Thank you. Have a great job. It's going to be nice. All right. Uh, so. Thank you. Have, have a good job. Have a good job.